Time to do another Dyson video. This time we have a V7 Animal Plus. And I thought this would be interesting because I have the V6 Animal. Thought I'd do a comparison between that model and this model, having picked this one up today from my mom. Got a good price. It was uh, on sale with rebate. And I figured we'd take a look, see what the differences are for those who are looking to get this new one or perhaps save money on the older Model 7 or perhaps even newer ones even newer than this. Take a look at some comparisons and we'll see what there is to see. Let's get started. Right off the bat, we can see this one boasts up to 30 minutes of fade-free suction. I have to imagine that they're talking about without any motorized brushes connected to the bottom. No way you're getting 30 minutes with one of those connected. This one includes a mini motorized tool, a combination tool. It came with mine, crevice tool, came with mine. This one has a flexi crevice tool. I'll have to take a look at that. This one also boasts 75% more brush bar power than the Dyson V6, the model I have. Begs the question, if power is measured in watts, how much of that power is coming from the battery? So I, I don't really know what that means. If you get more power from the brush, you're getting less battery time. So is it parasitic? Is it pulling more power from the battery to get that brush power? Probably so, if that's what they're claiming. I, for one, don't really use this brush. I use the low profile uh, pet brush that goes under furniture and what have you. I get a lot more time because I'm not using a powered brush on my vacuum cleaner. Here's a stand that holds up while it charges. Power pack is the uh, extension tube itself. This looks like the electric brush accessory for the, for the pet hair. Yeah, that's it. That came with mine as well on the six, but this one apparently uses 75% more power, which is not a good thing if you're battery powered. This is an electric mini brush this did not come with the v6 so this is new and here's the two attachments that came with mine this is the uh the brush with the collapsing brush that's used for uh cleaning up small messes one of the connections for the hard to reach areas this one opens up this is that flexi tube we'll get into this one in a bit and then here is the brush that connects to the end of that flexi tube finally we have the vacuum cleaner itself it also has this HEPA filter that unscrews from the back. So this is a secondary filter. It does ask for at least three and a half hours of charge time before usage and warns you twice to do so. It comes with IKEA-like stupid proof instructions. I'm just gonna mount it on a wall. Be sure to preload the power cord before mounting to the wall. And I leveled this to set the holes. I'll level it one more time just to get it right where I want it to tighten the screws down. So now we're all set, plug in the mains power, we're ready to charge. We'll come back when it's fully charged, see what we can do. In time I'll start locking on some of the components here, the place to store them. I'll point out one of the immediate negatives of this vacuum cleaner is the lack of backwards compatibility in the form of the connectors. We can see that this is one of the heads that I like to use on mine. I've purchased this as well. This is one that you would use for pet hair on a floor that doesn't have carpet. It also doesn't have motorized brushes, so it lasts a lot longer. Be that as it may, we can see that this connector won't work in here. It will require an adapter. And I have purchased an adapter for that task. This can now be plugged into the vacuum cleaner and used like normal. It's a little clunky, but this is what you have to do. They don't want any backwards compatibility, apparently. I see no sense in having to change this stuff out, but I have to point these things out in a review. That in turn plugs in like that. So fully charged, we're gonna remove this sticker. We're gonna give it a go on this tiled floor. Right now I have it on high suction. I believe that's a low setting. So we're just gonna run it. I've kicked it up to max now, we'll see what we get. Fine for the purposes of pet hair and what have you, the lowest setting generally pulls it up with no problem. Pet hair, small dust, heavier objects tend to require more suction. But if you're vacuuming with this kind of attachment, then generally you're not trying to pick up larger objects. I've emptied the basket and I'm going to go through the living room on the low setting to see what we pick up with regard to dust and dog hair. That's it. So I vacuumed the downstairs floor. I picked up some dust and dog hair as I expected. I think the real test here is I'm going to empty this bin 
and I'm gonna vacuum it now on the high level to see if I pick up anything more than this. Now we're all cleaned out. I'm on the highest setting and I'm gonna re-vacuum all the areas that I just vacuumed before. So you're running it on max, did manage to grab a little bit more, but it could have been a crevice or an area that I had missed that grabbed a little bit more dirt. It could be because uh, getting at the ends of the walls uh, allowed for it to pull slightly uh, given the reach for the end of the uh, type of attachment that was used in the back of the vacuum cleaner. So that's one reason why it may have done it. So yeah, a little bit more effective, but if you're doing a large amount of area and don't want to stop to recharge, you may want to consider your options. I've got the electric attachment that comes with it. I'm going to be using it on the rug. We're going to see how well this works. Come back and we're finished. Yeah, so that attachment works nice. I mean, it does the job. You can use a lot more electricity, but for areas we're using a rug or a carpet, you're gonna need it. Picks up the dirt. Trying out this new attachment too. This one is included in this set. This is electric motor. If you're having stairs that is carpeted at the same time. If it wasn't carpeted, we use that first attachment that I had. It would work very well. But in this case, we're gonna give this a go. See how this works. Wow. Wow, do you see that? I, that worked actually very nice. All that dog hair from that one step. See how much more I could get from this one step. That actually surprised me. It's probably very hard to get a full-size vacuum cleaner on these carpeted steps, that's why. Have the opportunity to take this little handheld device and get it. Yeah, this one surprised me, I'll admit. Yeah, that is something. It's almost like they've added a plastic piece here that stops everything. On the older one, used to, the dirt would just spin around in a circle, for those who remember on the V6, but here it just sort of gets plugged up right here in this area. So I don't know if that's a feature or a bug or what, but definitely, definitely this brush right here is doing the job on stairs. Here's that Flexi one they offer. I figured I might as well try this one out too. It's got the mini brush on there. Right now it's, uh, Right now it's all the way in, so it's not on, on flex mode, but just to like hit the side, somewhere where I couldn't hit, you can just you know, get these areas really easily. But also in, in the crevice of the, of the steps here, no vacuum cleaner head could hit this. You can't tell on video, but it's actually pushed downward. So I'm wondering if this brush could get in there. Yeah, it looks like it does. So for like hard reach areas, this is all hair over here. You just leave that right up. You can do one, one full pass right up the stairs and take care of that. I've extended the hose, got a couple of dirt devils under here, so. You get under the furniture. I guess, I guess that works. We could probably use the other head, the flat one, the flat brush, but this will do it because that extended hose is not very big. Emptying the container itself was specifically improved upon, not only because the components inside are made of higher quality materials, as you can see here, this metal mesh, but because you have access to it. It used to be on the older one. You couldn't really get up inside to remove a lot of the materials. You had to get into the container you had limited access to get some of the dirt that got stuck in there now the whole unit comes up so you're able to pull it out from the top if anything should get stuck in here this is a major improvement over the v6 i'm also going to point out that i like this better this is an actual switch and it is only two settings this is not variable it's either on high suction or max suction the thing is on the older one on the v6 there was a digital button in the back that set it for a high performance mode and it had a memory that would kind of remember where it was set and it didn't always work and you wouldn't know what setting it was on with something like this depending on where it's physically set is where it's going to be and you didn't have to contend with that digital button over there this is an improvement this is how it should have been designed from the get-go here we see the supplied information for the batteries of this unit a six cell 21.6 volt 2100 milliamp hour 46 watt hour battery
in this design, ultimately you're going to have the same problems with humidity and dust that you are with the V6. You're not going to get away from this. As you open up something like this, you're going to see that dust and humidity are going to cause accumulation inside these small tubes that are not going to come out and is going to cause increased resistance in this vacuum cleaner. The question is, do you get an older V6 and try and save money, or do you upgrade and get one of the newer models like the V7 or the V8? And the answer really is, if you don't have one of these vacuum cleaners already, get a newer model like a V7 or a V8 and get it at Costco, because you could get it significantly cheaper than you can on Amazon. If you look at the prices for a V6 on Amazon, they cost almost as much money as one of the newer models. And with the newer models, you get all sorts of benefits, like I mentioned like the canister that's easier to clean out and operate, the HEPA filter in the back, the easier to use button, nothing about battery time, which I think is a scam on these things. For all those things I mentioned and the fact that there are so many of them being sold at Costco with discounts, at that point already, it's probably best to get one of the newer models like a V7. If, however, you already have one of these devices, a V6, and you're wondering if you should go out and buy a new one, don't, not at all. If your vacuum cleaner is working fine, stay with it. You can actually look on Amazon. If your battery is starting to get tired or your vacuum cleaner is getting congested and requires maintenance, I'll post a link up here uh, for that video on fixing these V6s to get optimum performance. And to no avail, you're just not getting the time out of this you want. You go on Amazon, they got battery packs here that are significantly larger than stock, which will give you a tremendous amount of time on this V6. You already got all the attachments. You throw in a new filter, the new battery pack, the upgraded battery pack, and the thing will just last you forever as long as you don't drop it and shatter it. So why waste your money? And that's my final thoughts on what to do with purchases for these new Dyson vacuum cleaners. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the Dyson V7 vacuum cleaner. Hit that like button below. Helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?